You know, I will go to my grave knowing three different things. Montreal Canadiens are the greatest sports franchise of all time. Possibly Kids in the Hall is the greatest uh, episodic comedy show of all time or sketch show. And this guy is the most underrated actor of this and any other generation. And the words of Buddy Cole, actor, singer, dancer, model, award winner, the the pride of the American stage, the pride of American TV, helped develop film noir in his early stages on TV, uh, has won every major award except for an Oscar, has a, had a respect of his peers, and probably the most chilling character ever played on episodic television. Of course, he's a, a Nazi collaborator who was trying to escape uh, the law in Argentina in the... Uh, the Night Gallery uh, episode Escape Route in the pilot chilled me to the bone. That's the first time I heard of this guy and ever since up until the day he died I was honored to watch his many creations, productions, acting. Of course it's got to be Richard Colley. Now Richard Colley was an award-winning American stage, film and television actor and singer. He is best known for his distinguished theatrical career in which he twice won a Tony Award for Best Actor in a Musical. Colley created the role of Don Quixote in the original 65 production of the Broadway musical Man of La Mancha and was the first to sing and record one of my favorite songs, The Impossible Dream. This hit came from the show. In the 53 hit musical Kismet, he played the Cal Caliph in the original Broadway cast and as such was one of the quartet who sang And This Is My Beloved. Additionally, he won three Emmy Awards and two Golden Globes during his 50-year career and his sonorous baritone was also featured in a narration of a number of documentaries and other films. As the time, at the time of his death, Colley was described by critics as one of the theater's most distinguished and versatile actors and an indispensable actor, the kind of performer who could be called on to play kings and commoners and a diversity of characters in between. No doubt. <coughs> Not even a standing ovation would be enough for this guy. Now, born in Chicago, March 31st, 22. Uh... He was raised a very, very strict Roman Catholic. He graduated from Mount Carmel High School in 39, and after a year at Loyola University of Chicago, he left to study acting at Chicago's Barnum Traumatic School. In the late 1940s, he performed in Chicago area summer stock theaters with actors such as Alan Ferlin. Following his service in the United States Navy in World War II, he returned to Chicago working as an actor and announcer on radio before moving to New York City. In New York, he started singing with Roy Smolover. <coughs> now, Colley's work on stage included Kismet, No Strings, who, which was Richard Rogers' first stage musical after the death of Oscar Hammerstein II, in which Rogers wrote both music and lyrics. The Buddy the Hackett vehicle, I Had a Ball, and the lead roles in Redhead, Battle of La Mancha, and the play The in Incomparable Max. Kali later starred in the television play Patterns, which had a, which uh, was his longtime connection with Rod Serling. Now, this uh, production aired live on January 12, 55. Of course, Kali later showed up on Night Gallery uh, more than more than once. The pilot movie showed up on the new Twilight Zone. Now, this performance caused a sensation and won an Emmy for Serling for writing. Now, he also played the role of John Malcolm Patterson, future Attorney General of Alabama and later Governor of Alabama, in a 55 film, The Phoenix City Story. Carly also portrayed, also portrayed Matt teacher Joshua Edwards, whose photograph records were smashed by the delinquents in the Blackbird Jungle in 1955. Now, Kali won uh, Tony Awards for Best Actor in a Musical for Redhead in 59 and Man of La Mancha in 66. The dual role of middle-aged Oscar Cervantes in the fictional creation Coyote is one of the few musical roles that requires the talents of both leading man and character actor. Now, he had the blueprint for the singer-actor that we enjoy in 2022. Everything that the people see is based on Richard Kiley. He didn't need to teach dramatic singing or dramatic acting. He was it. Carly said while La Mancha was on Broadway that despite the fact he had grown tired of playing leading men, he would always be grateful for having been given the chance to perform in La Mancha. He performed the original production for five years and returned to the Broadway revivals in 72 and 77, saying he had become very possessive <coughs> of the role. 
Now, Cowley won three Emmy Awards and two Golden Globe Awards for his work on TV. He won both an Emmy and Golden Globe Awards for his tremendous performance in The Thornbirds as Patty Rachel Ward's his father in 1983, and of course, he underrated a year in the life. His third actor, uh, third acting Emmy was for guest actor in a drama series for an episode of Picket Fences in which he had a recurring role as the father of main character Jimmy Brock, played by Tom Skerritt. He also received an Emmy nomination for portraying Chief Justice Earl Warren in a 91 series Separate but Equal, dramatizing Bob Brown for the Border of Education. Now, besides Night Gallery, Twilight Zone, other big TV performances, including a, a star turn as a murderous police commissioner on Columbo in the episode of Friend Indeed. He's appearing on Gideon Sayatek in the Star Trek Deep Space Nine episode Second Sight, as well as guest roles on modern TV shows like Alan McBeal, Hawaii Five-0, and Gunsmoke. He also narrated the award-winning seven-part 1986 PBS documentary, Planet Earth. Now, Collie's baritone uh, made him a favorite to narrate documentaries for television. Starting with The Land of the Tiger in 85, he provided narration for numerous award-winning National Geographic video television specials. Now, in Jurassic Park, Collie's voice narrates the park's vehicle tour. He was introduced as a narrator for the tour, first in the novel by Michael Crichton and later the film adaptation by Spielberg, where the owner of the park said he spared no expense hiring Kelly, Kylie. Visitors to Universal's Islands of Adventure theme park in Orlando, Florida, and Universal Studios in Hollywood hear Kylie as a narrator of the Jurassic Park River Adventure ride, making him the only person to appear in the book, the film, and the ride. Now, he also, a very, very strong Christian, narrated the a &E documentary television series Mysteries of the Bible from 94 to 98. Of course, his uh, final acting role was in the very popular 99 TV movie, Blue Moon, which debuted uh, the month after his death. Now, he died of an unspecified bone marrow disease at Horton Hospital in Milton, New York, on March 5th, 99, less than a month before his 77th birthday. He was survived by his wife, dancer Patricia Ferreri, and six children from his first marriage. Sons David and Michael Kiley, and daughters Kathleen, Doritha, Aaron, and Deidre. His remains were interred at Warwick, and Broadway's lights on the night of his passing, uh, in a week of his passing, went dark in his honor. Now, filmography uh, on, on the big movies. The Mob, The Sniper, uh, Eight Iron Men in 52, Pick Up on Yout, uh, South Street in 53, Blackboard Jungle and the Phoenix City Story in 55, Spanish Affair, The Power of the Resurrection, Pendulum, a.k.a. the Cassius Clay, the documentary that I leave, very interesting, Le Petit Penance, The Little Prince, The Pilot, Looking for Mr. Goodbar as Mr. Dunn, Endless Love as Arthur Axelrod, he played Howard the Duck, the Cosmos voice, To the Limit, Miami Cops, The Final Days, Jurassic Park, The Gospel According to St. Matthew, Phenomena, Time to Say Goodbye, Patch Adams with Robin Williams and Jesus Christ. On TV, again, these two episodes on Justice, the, the film noir series, are just tremendous, where he plays, uh, in one of the episodes, a man caught up in... Uh, uh, adultery and double cross that comes to literally kill him or almost kill him. He also appeared that year uh, in the 50s craft television theater, Studio One, Alfred Hitchcock Presents, Alfred Hitchcock Hour again. Joseph Strobel, uh, 1969 Night Gallery, a top 10 acting performance of all time. TV, movies, whatever. Has to be be seen to believe. See my escape route uh, podcast on again. One of the most chilling performances of all time, and one of the most chilling denouements ever in thriller TV history. Of course, Gunsmoke, Bonanza, The Ceremony of Innocence, Murder Once Removed, Columbo, Friendly Persuasion, How to West Was One, Tremendous Miniseries, Angel on My Shoulder, Isabel's Choice, Golden Gate, The Thornbirds, George Washington TV Film, AD, The Cannibal Ghost, Do You Remember Love, Planet Earth. Twilight Zone, when he played uh, the last defender of Camelot in the revival, If Tomorrow Comes, The Year in the Life. Again, uh, a very underrated series. My First Love, Aladdin, Absolute Strangers, Separate but Equal, The Ray Bradbury Theater, Picket Fences, Star Trek Deep Space Nine, Mysteries of the Bible, The Great Defender, Mary and Tim, Time to Say Goodbye, Tigers of the Show, Ally McBeal and Blue Moon, An Honest Aids, M Miss Alliance, Kismet, Time Limit, uh, Redhead, of course, Tony Award, 
Nominated for No Strings in 63. Advice and Consent. Here's Love. I Had a Ball. Man of La Mancha is his first Roman. The Incomparable Max. Voices. Man of La Mancha. The Revival. Absurd Petron Singular. A, a Wilderness. Uh, the Harris. Man of La Mancha again. And uh, All My Sons. So, ladies and gentlemen, it was a sad day for me and all the media uh, to, to cover uh, Richard's passing. But my God, ladies and gentlemen, what, a, what an error he went through. Uh, as good on a stage as he was on uh, in film and TV. But as a youth, watching him in Night Gallery instigated my love of episodic dramatic television. And a living horror movie needs an actor like Richard Kiley. And I think the only t the reason why he never became a bigger star, because he knew what he could do, and he was dedicated to Man of La Mancha, he was dedicated to his family, and different stuff. He never said, I am the greatest actor that nobody talks about. And I'm talking about him. There's not enough days in the week, not of them, enough hours in a day, and minutes in an hour, for me to praise this guy. Every time I saw him on TV... I said, he's done it again. Like, it was just tremendous. And I hear his voice, like young kids in my family would watch the National Geographic special, my dad, and I would say, oh, it's another Richard Kiley. And the guy said, who's Richard Kiley? He, at one point, could have been Tom Hanks, could have been George Clooney. And I, came, I think he saw the level of celebration of his life. He was so respected. But just like Jack Lemmon, just like a lot of key actors, Peter Strauss, Richard Thomas, you're going to look at the history of television, of movies, of the stage, and he's that multiple threat, ladies and gentlemen. And like I said, the world's a lesser place. The last 23 years, without him in it, it's it's a bummer. So ladies and gentlemen, that's our latest in our Twilight Zone Night Gallery related podcast. Let us know what you think about Richard Colley, what was your favorite role, and again, the Night, the night Gallery pilot movie, if that don't make you scared on a cold winter night, I don't know what. I don't think uh, every time I see a, 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 a crucifix, I get scared because uh, <laughs> I'm not going to give it away. But like, even I see a crucifix at a church, it reminds me of Richard Colley. He's that much of an impact on my life as an entertainment writer and a lover of entertainment. Thanks for listening. Bye.